So guys, I, I woke up this morning and I saw this clip on Twitter. And this is such a good clip. Understand guys, at the time, I was a diehard Halo fan and I loved Halo 3. There was gonna be no reason I would ever stop playing Halo 3. And then we saw things like this live action trailer. And then eventually I saw my friends playing Halo Reach. And the first time I saw someone use armor lock and other things, I was like, wow, okay, I gotta give that a go. But before that began, it was the story, the narrative that really pulled us in. I loved how Halo Reach started. I loved that you had a squad called Noble Team. And one by one, they each got eliminated against impossible odds. And they made their way all the way to the end, successfully handing off Cortana to what would be the start of Halo 1. And then we had that final mission. It was storytelling like this that showed us what Bungie was capable of, even beyond the Halos 1 through 3. We knew they were capable of doing that with that set narrative, but ODST and especially Reach really showed us what Bungie can do even outside of what was already laid out in front of them. So when we have campaign experience like we had last year with Lightfall and we were upset, yes, you've got your people out there white knighting and saying, no, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that awful, but we've had great storytelling from Bungie before. And that's what we compare it to. Even in this day, I know 343 exists, Bungie people split off to go do that and work on Halo. But the reason why that benchmark is so high, it's not because we're comparing it to 343 or some other studio. We're comparing it to what Bungie themselves have already given us. And the final shake has got to be on that level. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because tomorrow we actually have a live stream from Bungie may be one of the most important live streams Bungie has ever done. And it's a live stream going over this new update called Into the Light. This is a free update for everybody. We don't really know what it is. We're assuming it may be some sort of horde mode. There's a lot of speculation. I speculated the other day a whole bunch on it. But this, this could be the start of getting that hype train going into the final shape. And that is vitally important for Bungie right now. We're actually going to be live watching it on Twitch ourselves and pretty much judging to see what it is Bungie has to show us. They're actually doing three live streams over the next three weeks that are going to go over everything for the Into the Light update. And again, keep in mind, guys, they're mentioning that this is new content. And not only is it new content, but everything is going to focus on Into the Light. It's not like one of the live streams is going to be Into the Light and then we're going to have a Vidoc of like what's coming in the final shape and then some promo materials for the final shape. These next three live streams are going to be completely focused on Into the Light, which is incredible. And what that really boils down to is that having three live streams just to go over one update tells us that it must be a sizable update. And really, I wouldn't be surprised if we had like episodic content that was supposed to come out this time of the year anyways, just be moved up to this timeline. Whatever the case, new content is always welcomed inside of Destiny. And I hope we get to go to things like the Destiny 1 Tower again. It would be amazing to have actually a community event. You know, I talk about Helldivers and I love that the developers at Arrowhead really pulls the community together to do events to unlock certain things. And Destiny and Bungie used to be the kings at that but they haven't done that in a long time. But this takes us to the point of today's video. Why Bungie and Destiny literally needs to be flawless going into the final shape and why the expansion itself needs to be better than even Forsaken. Forsaken is held as one of the greatest expansions Bungie has ever done. I even held it as better than like the Taken King and actually better than the Witch Queen. Forsaken needs to be the benchmark and this expansion needs to exceed that benchmark. Now, there are a lot of folks out there that immediately defend Bungie. The moment we say anything negative, they're just like, yo, you're farming for engagement and that's all you're doing. But guys, literally from Sony themselves, they are finding that Bungie needs to improve. We did a video a while back actually covering what the president of Sony actually had to say about Bungie. He stated, I visited the Bungie studios and had meetings with the management and I saw that employees working in the studios were highly motivated, showing great creativity, as well as an impressive knowledge of life services. However, I also felt that there was room for improvement from a business perspective with regard to areas such as the use of business expenses and assuming accountability for development timelines. I hope to continue the dialogue and come up with some good solutions. Now, shortly after we made that video, I got an email and not only did I get an email, but it hit pretty much all my inboxes, meaning it hit my inbox, it hit my agency's inbox, and then my individual agent's inbox, which means this person wanted me to see this email. Now, 
it's no surprise. I've talked to people that have worked at Bungie. I'm friends with people at Bungie. Uh, I love a lot of the developers that work at Bungie. Uh, but this email was concerning. And I wanted to share this with you guys. And I just want to know your thoughts on this. Hey there, I'm writing this on a throwaway. Please use this information to corroborate with other sources you may have. Internal perspective at Sony is very negative towards Bungie right now. It is seen as a failed investment and strategies being discussed revolve around more of recouping losses. One internal leader from US is fighting to take over to right the ship, while many others across the Pacific want a much harsher method. The former US leader holds a lot of respect from overseas leadership, so it's likely he or she will get their way. That person's perspective is that there are many gluttonous executives at Bungie who are not doing their jobs and are hindering the organization. It is also believed that the workers are skilled, but the leadership is unable to perform their duties. Bungie is in a hard spot because pre-order numbers are lower than anticipated. I apologize. I do not have the details on actual numbers. Sony believes that the finances will not allow Bungie to avoid a takeover, even with another round of layoffs, as that would cannibalize development and future revenue. Overall, Sony has been very upset at Bungie's leadership. They have not been able to successfully advise Sony teams. And while Lightfall hit internal revenue targets, every target since has been missed at an escalating decline. Bungie leadership regularly reschedules meetings with Sony leadership, knowing that the next time slot can be months away. I hope this sheds light for ongoings from Sony's side. It is believed that the takeover would allow Sony to turn Destiny into a more profitable game. This sounds bad, but it is being treated as lightning in a bottle. Sony leadership wants to nurture the game and understand that more aggressive monetization would not be healthy. There would be a monetization model switch, though, as it is believed the current model is too confusing damn right it is the main difference between the u.s leader versus japan leaders getting their way matters more for bungie's in development titles if japan leadership gets their way teams for future titles will be gutted and reformed so it's interesting that last note right there that the main difference between u.s leaders versus japan leaders getting their way matters more for bungie's in development titles that means for marathon and for gummy bears if sony takes over they could literally go in there and either, you know, restructure or outright just gut those teams or maybe move everyone onto Destiny. It's interesting, too, that they mentioned that they treat Destiny as lightning in a bottle, which I would actually say that's accurate. I mean, think about what Destiny is. It really is that. The game should have died multiple times, and yet it continues to survive. And yes, we have hit many lows, especially this past year, but I do believe that the game has lots of legs, especially after the most recent updates, the things like Skimmers and the Sandbox updates. I'm loving it. I've been playing more Destiny than ever before. And if Into the Light has anything to show for it, that may be the update that really sparks everything back for everyone that has taken a break from Destiny. Now, listen, should I truly trust this email? I don't know, guys. I will say whoever it was, they wanted me to see this email. And I wouldn't be surprised if other creators have actually gotten this email. But it, it is oddly specific in certain areas. And it seems like someone, if they did write this email, they had a, a very good tap on the pulse of what we would assume would be the pulse of Sony and Bungie's relationship. I would say the, the other really interesting thing about that email was this comment right here. One internal leader from US is fighting to take over to right the ship, while many others from across the Pacific want a much harsher method. The former US leader holds a lot of respect from overseas leadership. So it's likely he or she will get their way. Now, I don't know who they're talking about here. We do know that we have a new game director for Destiny 2, but it could be anyone. It could be someone on the board. Uh, it could be someone that we never even heard of. It could be someone even outside of Bungie. You know, Tyson Green is now the game director for Destiny 2 now, and he does have a lot of seniority, but I don't know if he's that guy, if he's that US leader that they're talking about. Now, as far as the pre-order numbers, you know, we saw that article from Destiny Bulletin not that long ago, going over the pre-order numbers and saying that they are drastically lower. And there was a lot of conflict there. You know, essentially, we don't know if these numbers are accurate or not. But I will say from my own inner circles, you know, I've, I've got a doctor. He's been playing Destiny for years. I go and I visit him. And look, even he is saying like, yo, I'm not going to be picking up the final shape until after I've seen gameplay and seen the expansion out for at least a week. So like, my internal friends that normally always come back for the annual expansion because they felt like they got burnt so bad with Lightfall. They're actually sitting back and they're just waiting. They're waiting to see is Final Shape going to wow us? And not only are they waiting to see that from a Vidog or from a, from a trailer, but they're also waiting from just seeing the gameplay and the expansion launch itself. 
because normally when an expansion rolls out it's like okay we're in the the heart of the expansion we're, we're driving through the story and we always kind of wait till the end of the raid before we start making a call on the expansion and that's what happened in life i was like all right the, the, the campaign wasn't great by no means, but maybe we're going to get a raid experience on the level of Val. And of course, we did not get that experience with Root of Nightmares. But just from my own inner circles and just my friends that, that interact with the real world, they are all taking a step back and waiting to see what the final shape has to offer. Now, I think the question we need to ask ourselves now, and this is really the whole point in this video, would a Sony-owned Bungie really be that bad? Or would a Sony-owned or ran Destiny be that bad? One of the big things that I noticed in this email was the point that they made about Destiny itself being lightning in a bottle. That Sony leadership wants to nurture that game. I didn't mention anything else about Marathon or any of the other titles, but the fact that they're specifically dialed in on Destiny and they recognize what Destiny has to offer and its uniqueness, that speaks volumes. And it makes me wonder, would Sony running things actually be better for Bungie? Now, we have to ask the question, would it also be better for the developers themselves? I don't know. And uh, I guess we would have to just look at the track record with Sony and other development studios. At least from what I've seen outwardly looking in and some of the people that I know in the industry, Sony's been pretty good with them. You know, they give a lot of creative freedom. They want the games to be good. And it kind of goes against what Bungie's original pitch was in their DDC years ago, which was the whole thing of, hey, don't over deliver. I know a lot of people are saying things got taken out of context there, but that is a bold stance to take, especially if your game is on the decline. Now, whatever the case, whether the pre-order numbers are as low as people think they are, or whether this email is completely fabricated, really none of it matters because tomorrow, everything that we're going to be shown into the Into the Light update, that's going to be one of the things that will start or kill the hype going into the final shape. Dude, if this, this reveal stream turns out to be terrible and Into the Light is some like garbage public events, oh boy. That's going to be rough, man. And so I hope whatever it is Bungie has to show us is going to be enough here. Not only for the sake of Destiny, but for Bungie themselves. So guys, that's everything I wanted to talk about. Let me know in the comments below what you think. We'll be live tomorrow if you want to join us. Yes, we're going to be watching this entire live stream, looking at it. We'll see if we get another two tokens in a blue situation happening for us. It'll be a good time. So come join us. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.